Hello, everyone. This is Pino Trogo again from San Francisco State University, and this is the introduction to drawing for designers class. And today we're going to do a uh, an orthographic drawing of a mill carton. And we're going to do different views of a, well, it turns out it's actually a goldfish carton, but it's the same packaging that um, you know is used for milk and other liquids. Um, I made another one that I painted, so it'd be a little easier to look at. I also um, took one apart and uh, just to show how it's made. And then, um, online and I learned, I put a couple of links to a video that shows how, uh, how this is made in terms of printing and also in terms of uh, packaging. Um, the company is called Tetra Pak. Um, sometimes you'll see the name, sometimes it's, you know, some other brand, but, but the inventor is, um, yeah, it's inside there, Tetra Pak. Um, the inventor was this uh, Dutch company that actually, I think in 1950 or so, invented a way to um, continuously fill up milk containers and, um, and seal them at the same time. And it's called Tetra Pak because um, from four. So let me just show you. Uh, tetra just means four. And this was the original container. Uh, it was shaped like a pyramid, a three-sided pyramid. And uh, it was a funny shape because nobody knew how to grab it. Uh, but the way that they were made is that there would be a cylinder of milk going right through this cylinder, right? And then they would, um, as the cylinder is moving, there would be these cinchers. They would basically cinch the package in two directions orthogonal to each other so that you would make uh, this package, okay? More symmetrical than this. Um, and so that, that's the main Tetra Pak. Uh, it's a funny thing because actually if you put a bunch of these together, they don't actually fill up the space like a cube might, you know, if you put lots of cubes. So it wasn't that great in terms of, um, stacking many together because again it doesn't fill space um, anyway that's that's tetra pack and the um the videos that i'll, I'll post in i learn show um all the process of how it's made so let's see we're gonna do a um an orthographic drawing today and then later in another video we'll do also a isometric drawing this drawing will be at 100 percent scale uh, yeah, and this is actually a half scale. So depending if you have a small or a large cart than yourselves, you might have to adjust your scale. Uh, this is bigger. It's, uh, let's see, this is 16 ounces, this is eight ounces. This would still fit at half scale, uh, but much bigger, you won't be able to, so. Uh, so let's see, um, before I start. And so there'll be three views of the object. We'll show the front view right there. We'll show the side view right here. And we'll show the top view right there. And a couple of things about orthographic projections. Let's see, I'll try to lift this up. Uh, perhaps in other videos you've seen how I show um, how when we do a drawing and orthographic projection, what we're doing is we're flattening out. I have many versions here. We're flattening out, if you can see it, let's see. Move the camera. If I change. Um, so this would be our front view, our side view, and our top view. And the way it's done is that we're actually we're we're flattening out three planes, right? And these three planes are like a glass box inside which we put 
or object, okay, which then gets projected to the various um, walls, which would be like glass. Uh, so this was this uh, this particular carton. Um, let me show you another one. This is for a cube that actually had a cutout. Again, if this is like this, this would be one view, the front, the top, and the side. And again, the way it works is that the three views get flattened out into a single sheet, okay? Um, what happens though is that, see if that's the front view, can you see that? And then this is the side view. What we're doing is it's, we're really looking at it from outside, imagining that this is a, a glass box and we're looking through. Try to show that here. So let's see if I can show it. Um, so these will be the three views of this object if you had a cutout from the front, from the side, and from the top. And by the way, this is why you would need the compass to bring over from the uh, hinged edge of this box the dimensions to the top so that it, so you don't have to draw everything, so you don't have to measure everything. So anyway, that's how it moves, as you can see. And then this will be our glass house. And I'm looking inside that glass house and I see this cube, right? So I see the front, I see the top, and I see the side, sort of, there you go. Um, and in general, if this is my front, the right side of an object is me going around to the right side. Okay, that's what I, that's what I see. Okay, so that's an orthographic projection and everything is going perpendicular. It's going perpendicular to each face. Okay. So let's see. Um, I'll be drawing this from scratch to show you. And then, okay, so those are the three views. And then we're gonna do two views, which are gonna be sections. We're gonna cut, we're gonna, gonna, we're gonna cut this guy right here and we're gonna cut it right there. And we cut it here and we look from this side, we cut here and we look from that top. Uh, that will be later. And this will be these two views, okay? It's a little small. Um, I could have done a whole drawing just with this, maybe vertical, and then do the section on a different drawing, but that, you know, it's one extra drawing. So, and another thing to note is that we're gonna mark those sections with letters AA and BB, and this will be section AA, and this will be section BB. Okay. So we'll, um, we'll start out by taking again a good piece of, Good piece of board or drawing board. I mean, drawing paper. That is, uh, Bristol is sort of a generic term. This is from Canson, and it's pretty strong. Okay, this is a hundred pound cover or two hundred and sixty grams per square meter. That's the European, more absolute way of measuring it. Much better. Um, I'm going to tape it down. I'm going to put this away for a moment. So when you tape it down. Um, you can use tape, but don't use scotch tape. Excuse, use either um, um, masking tape like this, or if you have the luxury <laughs> of having um, drafting dots like this, these are nice because the, the triangles don't catch, okay? Um, I'm gonna use, tape for now, just because you can see it better. And when you do that, you want to put the, the tape across the corner, okay? But just leave, don't do it too far in because otherwise you won't be able to draw the, um, the border, okay? The half inch border. So you have to clear half inch at least. Okay, and now I'm going to do again the, the um, the title block and the border, et cetera, et cetera. You can skip forward, um, but I'm gonna talk also 
about uh, the writing, the drawing instruments. Okay. Let's see if I can find something to draw on. So for these drawings, when we use tools, um, this is the preferred tool, okay? It's a mechanical lead holder that has a two millimeter um, lead. It's not lead, it's graphite. So don't worry, you won't get poisoned even if you poke yourself. Um, with a 2H, um, 2H lead, okay? Now for this drawing, I'm gonna be using a softer lead because otherwise it won't be shown well in the video, okay? But you need to use this. Um, everything else is gonna be lower quality than this, okay? So if you're gonna use a pencil, okay, but it's not gonna be as good. And if you're gonna use also this gadget, which is the gadget that remember, you just go click, 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 and that thing comes out. I don't like it because it breaks really often it's not very good, doesn't give a good edge against the, uh, the drafting instrument. So this is the right kind. So I'm gonna switch my lead just for the video to a softer lead. Um, and then you have different options to sharpen it. If you have a piece of sandpaper, this is a little gadget that I got from my teacher that has different um, sandpaper grades, you can go like this, you have to rotate it. Um, so you can get one of those pads, remember, that look like this, somewhere like that. And then it's got the sandpaper here, this flips open. Um, or if you don't wanna go through this trouble, you would need a, a little rag to clean it up. Um, you can spend some money if you have this tool um, and buy a sharpener um, that's like this. And these are very good. It takes a while to get used to them, but I have a grinder inside and it's just meant to sharpen that. Actually, I just broke it. Okay, that's sort of, there's some other practice myself. So let's try again. Now I'm really, Okay. Mess here, but yeah, you have to kind of feel it. And when it stops grinding, it means it's sharp. There we go. And this makes the lead very, very sharp and super precise and I'll show you how sharp it is. I calculated it can be as sharp as 250th of an inch. There you go. It's nice with this loop I can show. I can show how sharp it is. And I can make it even sharper by going like that. Now, because it's, um, because it's too, because it's B and not uh, to H, it's gonna get dull. It's gonna get blunt pretty quickly, but um, all right. So I'm gonna put those away and, oh yeah, just to show you the difference because people think, oh, these are great. This, they're not great at all, actually. I mean, they're practical. This is 0.7 millimeters and look at the difference. Okay, so a lot of difference, much better in the uh, the two millimeter lead. So this is actually less than one millimeter. That's two millimeters, but because of the sharpening, it's much, much sharper. But if you have nothing else, I'm not gonna say, but these are the little leads you can get for these guys. Okay, now let's move this without creating a mess. Right. 
Okay, like I said, you can now skip forward if you have seen this part of the video already, but I am gonna go through um, and I'm gonna do the title block. Okay, because there might be always somebody that comes to this video for the first time and they're gonna maybe learn how to do this, okay? So the trick here is to measure as little as possible, right? We talked about that. So the title block was half an inch. So these triangles have millimeters and inches. You need millimeters for this drawing, okay? Uh, so if you don't have, if you have triangles that don't have markings, what you need to do is get a ruler that does have markings. So you measure with this and then you draw with that, okay? To save some time, I'm gonna use these. And I'm gonna mark half inch there, half inch at the bottom and then three quarter inch for the um, title block and then uh, about an eighth of an inch in the middle there. Uh, half inch on the left, half inch on the right. And now I'm gonna use the edge of the paper. I'm gonna assume it's square. It's never really perfectly square, but for the, for this part, it's okay. Um, so I just put, you don't see it, but I have my ruler against the paper here. Okay, so I'm, in other words, I have it like this and I'm moving. And actually, let's go over this for a moment. So when you, when you, use, you always have to use two triangles, unless you have a nice board and you have a T-square that you can move that T-square, you know, next to the board. Uh, and then use a triangle with it, um, or even a fancier table, you know, drafting board with a parallel edge that moves up and down. Uh, you're going to need to use two triangles, and that's just that's just a fact of life of these drawings. Um, otherwise, everything is going to be sort of whacked um, out of whack. So yeah, so what I'm doing now is I'm moving the two triangles this way. Once I decide that it's okay, let's assume, for example, I take a reading on the left, on the right here, and I said, that's good. Then I put my hand on the paper and the triangle. Um, then I slide the next one. Oops, and I just moved it. I might have practiced myself. Um, then I move it, and then I, I lock it with, with these other fingers that are sort of free to move so that when I decide, okay, that's good. Now I lock it and now I draw because if I don't lock it, when I draw, it's gonna push, okay? So we'll see it better when we do the actual drawing of the, um, of the cart. And so for now, I'm gonna draw some light lines. A little crowded here. And now I don't have this triangles a little bit short, so I have to do several steps. You can see I'm holding the, uh, the triangle here. Of course, here I'm added, but aided by the, uh, by the edge of the paper, which gives me a nice edge. Uh, remember to keep your lines for your lettering very light. Okay, so now I have to bring these over because I don't have enough. Okay, now to go over them again, you could perhaps just trace them now I have to be careful not to hit the camera here um, so after you do the light ones you um, you darken the line okay and, and now I'm going to really draw them pretty dark because again for the purposes of the video okay um, so working with this tool you can do sharp lines dark but not really thick they're more like dark which is really what you want um, Anything else, like a, an actual pencil that you have to sharpen with a you know, pencil sharpener, it's not going to give you a good, it's also very bulky, right? Pencil, 
an actual pencil is going to be in the way of your triangle when you're trying to, right? It's going to be further away. Whereas with this, you can get really close to the edge. So that's another reason to not use a regular pencil and instead to use a, a lead holder or mechanical lead holder. Again, two millimeters. And these two here would be nicer if I could do them, not you know having to lay it down every time, but let's say with a T-square that I move it up and down, but I don't have that edge now, so. And let's see. You know, everybody's in always such a rush because they've got so many commitments, but like I said, you can skip forward to the video. Nobody will know. Okay, that looks pretty good. Um, so why don't I write what this is? I'm just gonna copy it from the one that I've already made. Uh, I added actually a box to put the scale. Scale is one to two. So whatever is one here, one inch, one centimeter, whatever, is actually two in real life. So one to two just means 200%. I mean, sorry, 50%. Um, and so we'll, um, we'll add the, um, no, I don't want to. Well, maybe, I tell you what, maybe for lettering, this thing might be good. <laughs> Let's try it. Um, because I don't have to use the ruler. So this is called, yeah, this is nice, 13. If I do a very small, like an eighth of an inch, uh, actually that's uh, one, two, three, four. It's almost like a 16th of an inch, which is this much. Yeah, between one sixteenth and one, one eighth, I can fit a lot of stuff. So 13. Milk, carton, carto, graphic, yeah, it's a little soft still. Okay, let's see if I can break. Uh, I'm gonna put my name. No, because then I have to repeat it. I'll just say to the name. Make sure you stay within the lines, yeah? If you put the lines, you might as well use them. To the name, and then we're going to say this to 20. And then my name, my last name, just my last name. Again, it's T-R-O-G-U. And then S-F-S-U. Um, so the scale is one to two. Scale one to two. And the date, this is gonna be due on March 2nd, 2021. Okay. All right. It's not, the not so fun part, but it's, it needs to be there. Okay. Um, so now the tricky part is that you need to scale down everything to half, right? So what you need to do is, if you happen to have this, I'm not going to show you what the dimensions are, but if you have to have something like this, then you have to measure it, right? And when you measure it again, using millimeters, it's easier because it's easier to just, yeah, to just count how many there are and then divide by half. And with inches, it's a lot harder. For example, this is two and three quarter, no, three and a half tall. How much is that by half? I don't know. I think I know, but anyway, it's a lot of work. Um, so use, use whatever you have, but millimeters is what I'm telling you to, to write down. And then here I actually spent quite a bit of time, um, 
writing down and figuring out how things would fit in my drawing because I had to plan a little bit ahead, okay? So basically I had to make myself a little chart with the actual dimensions. And then I tried it three quarters. It wasn't so good, it didn't actually fit. So I had to go half inch, which is a little bit too much, but um, so it fit. And then I made myself, a, and then I tried to figure out, yeah, what I would need to show, which was six panels. And then I finally made this chart actually for the video now to be a little, a little more clear too. And that is, I measured the uh, various parts, okay? And then I labeled them, and A is the height, B is uh, the base, the, uh, you know, it's a square. Uh, C is the height of the wall here, what I call the wall, I call this the roof. And D is, I just, I just made it even, I just made this part the same height as this, okay? Um, so right here, this roof part is the same height as this part right there. Um, and so with this, then I use the calculator or try to do it in my head. And I, I, I used first a, um, let's see if it's here, uh, an architect scale. Uh, here it is. Because inches are such a pain, um, there's this thing called an architect scale. So that allows you to write down immediately what something would be at a different scale, usually smaller. And this is called architects because typically inches translate to feet here, but we can use it for our purposes too. So if I wanted to know, for example, three and a half, which is this. Okay, three and a half. How much is that at three quarter scale or at 75%? I would go here and I would look, okay, zero, one, two, three and a half. So it would be, it would be this much. Okay. So how much is that? I don't know. That's the problem. So I could measure it now and I realize, oh, it's two and a half inches. Okay. No, actually, two and five eighths. It's a little bit bigger. Yeah, two and five eighths right there. Okay, so there you go. It's very complicated. Um, on the computer, of course, not that much. Although even on the computer, because inches are fractions, it has to turn them into decimals, which is another layer. Um, anyway, after using this guy to measure back and forth, back and forth, I wrote down the corresponding three quarter scale measures to these things, but then I knew that wasn't gonna work and then I got to 50%. And then eventually I just abandoned it and I just went to millimeters, okay? So with millimeters, I measured and said, okay, that's um, 89 millimeters. By the way, one centimeter is equal 10 millimeters and you always start from zero, right? You always measure from that spot right there. So anyway, I wrote them all down, actual size at 75% and then at half size. So for the half size, which is what we're gonna use, um, these are the corresponding dimensions for these parts. Remember though that in the drawing, you're actually going to write on the drawing, the actual dimensions of the object. Um, that's how it's done. You just write the actual dimensions. Um, so that's it. So armed with that, the first thing that I did here, um, I actually first I divided into six quadrants, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I started, yeah, I started with this division. And I started with my front view and that's what we're going to do. We're going to do the front. I forget what I said in my learn. I think that we're going to do the side and then the top and then the two sections. Okay, so I'm just gonna get to it now and hopefully we'll be fast enough, but not too fast to um, lose you. So I'll leave this here and I'm going to um, 
Yeah, I'm leave this there too. So clean up my plate here. <clears throat> okay, my point is still pretty good. If it gets a little dark, you can maybe, you know, go like that and sharpen it just by rubbing it on the paper too, instead of the um, sandpaper. Um, so, okay, well, I'm actually gonna measure because let's see, what, what did they do? Yeah, I used, uh, okay, 93 millimeters. That was my first division. Did I use millimeters here? Yeah, and then I put 15 millimeters spacing. Um, the one thing to remember, regardless of how you place this, you have to fit them, of course, is that you wanna keep this line um, between the objects at an equal distance, okay? Because remember, those lines represent the, um, the hinges of our boxes. Okay, so these are the lines, which in the drawing are these lines, right? And by the way, here, I, I drew them straight lines at 45, but here's what you would need a compass for to project the lines from one view to the next um, using the compass. And maybe I'll demonstrate that in a moment. So that's important that these lines, yeah, stay in the middle, okay? So I'll just be referring to this back and forth and I'll start to this. It's, um, yeah, 93. So 93 right here. So now I have to do a little bit of groundwork. Um, I think I said, okay, 93, although later I didn't. Yeah, so this was a perfect division in three. Uh, just to start, okay, because you can change it. And then this is, so uh, now I'm using inches, uh, which of course they're hard to split. This is not long enough. So seven and a quarter, so three and a half, three and a half plus one eighth. So this would be three and five eighths. Now I can do this fairly quickly because I'm, I've sort of used them, but they really are kind of not very friendly inches. Um, okay. So now I'm establishing my, my divisions here. And I'm, I'm doing them fairly dark because I know I'll be, well, actually the one on the right, I won't darken it. So I'll leave that a little bit light. Uh, and now I've started, okay. My my whole box is gonna be, let's see, 44 and a half by 35, right? That's the height by the width or yeah, 44 and a half by 35. So just to double check, I'm gonna measure here 44 and a half. Yeah, of course that's kind of like 45, but you can split half a, mil a millimeter. So, and I left, uh, 15 millimeters. So I'm gonna create now this, this sort of buffer zone at 15 everywhere uh, from these lines, which are my, remember they're, they're my hinges, okay? I like to call them hinges. Once you get one drawing, then the others will be easier because we have all the reference spots, okay? Uh, so we said it was 35 wide, yes. Okay, so 35 millimeters wide. Like that. Now this is the top and A was, um, Okay, this is 35, yeah, there was 44 and a half. Okay, 44 and a half, right there. Okay, now I've got my first box. Um, okay, 
and leave these lines, you know, nice and light. So now I can, you know, almost say, okay, did I do it right? Yeah, that's that looks about right. That's about the half point there. So right there. And the other thing I need is these two dimensions, which were um, 25 and a half millimeters each from the top, D and D. Okay. 25 and a half millimeter from the top, which is here. Oh, I'm sorry. That was a mistake. It's nine and a half, nine and a half millimeters with these two guys, one each. So nine and a half. You can see that even a, a simple thing like this does require you know a little bit of planning um, and organization. And as soon as I'm done now with my base, I'm gonna darken it because well, number one, I feel like I've done something. Um, okay, this piece right here, and it's gonna make me feel good. Okay. So now when you do this, let me talk about this. So it's hard, just like freehand, it's hard to start and stop kind of cold turkey, you know, at the end, or start cold turkey and stop on a dime. Um, I wonder if a turkey can dance on a dime. I don't know. Anyway, so what you have to do is you start and then maybe you start from the other end. So now I'm gonna start here, fade out a little bit and then start from the other end and fade in or fade out towards the center. And that will allow you to really get some nice corners because now you don't want to cross the line, okay? Meaning you don't want to, you want to end right on the spot there. Okay. And also when you, you can turn the pencil, I mean the, the mechanical pencil a little bit to get a nice smooth, an even line. If you keep it without turning it, it will get darker and darker, thicker and thicker. So of course this view doesn't really reveal much if you didn't know already what it was. Um, sorry, I'm gonna get rid of some tape which is sticking to my triangle here. Right, and that's why the other views help. Okay, so that's the first one. So that will be the front view. Uh, now we're gonna do basically the same block on the other side, except of course, it's gonna show the side, right? It's gonna show this, but remember, because we pretty much have all the information we need, we just need the center, which we can measure. Um, so now things are gonna speed up. And because this is no longer the right distance here, I'm gonna make a new line at one and a half. Right here. Again, remember you don't see it, but I'm using my guide here on this on the bottom, okay? Um, and perhaps because I don't wanna get confused, I tend to not erase too much, but in this case, I'll get rid of that line because it could confuse me later. Um, so that's my other hinge. Now I'm gonna space it by the same amount. One and a half, I'm gonna, this was for the, what was it, 35? Then the height, I know. So you'll see now it goes super fast. Like that. That's what I mean by measuring very little and doing as much as possible, just using information already available as long as you use the tools together in conjunction. So now I'm gonna go light because these lines are really just, these are called projection lines. So you're projecting from one view to the next. Um, okay. Now I just need to write, to draw the, um, 
the middle of this, which is 35. So that would be 17 and a half right here. There is actually a way to split, split a millimeter. Um, there we go. So now I have all the information, right, to draw it. Um, so a couple of things, um, because it's so small, we're not gonna try to show thicknesses as much. However, it does get a little, it does get doubled up here, the, car, the cardboard, right? So we're going to actually show that. And here, well, actually here, I just showed one, um, but then we're gonna leave all the other lines alone. Since we're talking about thicknesses, let me, um, we can actually measure how thick this cardboard is. But again, the drawing is too small to really show it properly, right? However, if you need to know what it is, um, you can use a caliper, okay? Which is a precision instrument that you know can tell you how thick things are. Like this pencil, for example or in this case, the paper. So it's uh, half a millimeter, 52. Okay, you could set it to inches, but again, that's, that's uh, I don't wanna do that now. Um, so everything is a thickness, right? And that's why you have books where the pages are not very thick, but once you add 500 of them, you get a book. So this piece of post-it, it's, you know, 20, yeah, 120, yeah, 20% 20 of a millimeter. Um, and if I change it to inches, let's see how thick it is. It's uh, one four thousandth of an inch, which I think it's like a human hair, something like that. So that's a caliper, industrial designers use it. Um, that's a digital one. There are some older ones that are pretty cool because um, you have to, this is analog actually, and you have to read it by, like if this is 15 and 13 millimeters and something, let's see. Let's see where we are. Yeah, so I'm looking at, actually like that. So is it 12 millimeters? It's past one centimeter. So it's gonna be, and then there's two more bars and a little, a little more. So it's 12 millimeters. And the question is how much more is there besides the 12 millimeters? So what you do is you go, you keep going around here, sliding down until you see the one that actually matches perfectly. And if I go there, I can see that the one that matches is somewhere. Maybe five. Actually, seven. Oh, right underneath. Yeah, there you go. Seven. So that seven tells me along this scale that this measurement is um, 12 millimeters and seven tenths of a millimeter. Okay, that would be this gap right here. So that's an analog caliper. And uh, what did we say this was? I forget, half a millimeter, right? Sorry. So it's half a millimeter. And it turns out that there's actually six separate layers, some plastic layer on top and on the, on the bottom and then cardboard and then other stuff. Um, so half a millimeter, if we did half scale, that's a quarter of a millimeter. That's a little tough. The way you can show it is you can show maybe a couple of lines, okay, which is, Still gives a little bit a sense that there is something there. Okay, so, oh, and then the other thing we're gonna show is that actually you'll see later, I'm not gonna give it away now, but you'll see later that this fold 
this part here doesn't actually stick together. So this fold right there inside is actually a little lower than here. Okay, and that's why you see this little bit of uh, bit there. Okay, so I'm just gonna eyeball that. I, in my drawing, I put it a couple of millimeters lower. All right. So, because I have to describe everything, the video takes longer actually than probably what's going to take you to. Um, okay, what I'm going to do is actually first I'm going to draw that thickness of this of this top part right here because that's going to require again a little bit of. And maybe this time, because I know it's actually two layers, um, we get a little thinner. I'll draw two layers, but I can start darkening it like that. And I'll draw the roof. Now the roof is gonna have a specific angle, so you can't use two triangles for that, but you can start and then you can use two triangles to do the second line like that. We'll just move it down. Okay, I'm not, um, not connecting all the way down below because here it's going to go to a single line. So I did the same thing here. And you see how I'm doing this again from the beginning towards the middle, from the beginning towards the middle. It's a lot easier to control how your endings are going to be. All right, now I do everything else. And right now I'm just going to pick up the lines as I see them. You have to leave room for the lead. Uh, you can't put the ruler exactly on top of where you need to draw the line because then there's no room, right? To, uh, so it's always a little bit to the side. Okay, number two is done. So that's my right side view. Oh no, I have to do that. The little detail because again, we see it. It's just a little hard to see in the picture, but... Um, so we said that's two millimeters, so quite simple. Draw, let's see, one and two right there. Right. The drawing is a little small, so it gets a little tricky. But, and then we also see this little part there, which is kind of under the roof. And I'm gonna darken the very tip of that uh, seal right here. Okay, that's number two. I'm gonna move now to the top. Oh, actually I forgot one little detail, which was um, this fold. Well, it's not a fold, it's a pre-score. Can you see it? It's this guy right here. Um, which allows it then to open it, to open it up, right? So that was at um, let's see, 11, you know, this might change. It doesn't go all the way to the very top, it stops. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna stop it right there and I'm gonna leave it not too dark. Okay, now let me actually quickly show you Oh, do I have a compass? Yeah, for those of you who are getting a compass, um, you're gonna need a compass, uh, not for this drawing really, because we can do we can do those lines at 45, but later, uh, well, actually, if you're doing these so-called track A, there are several drawings that will require a compass, but always check with your relatives, maybe grandparents, uncles, because you, it could be that they have you know, kind of a jewel of a compass like this set, um, which is gorgeous instruments. Um, and then usually the old stuff is really good. Um, so 
let's see if I can show you how now I would bring. So in other words, I could measure here and I say, okay, I measured the same amount and then I measured the square, but it's not as elegant as doing this, which is bringing across just like we did here. This compass, these views, right? So from here, now I'm going to bring it over there. And I'm using the compass in that particular spot, right? Which is the same as saying, again, that this rotates this way, right? See how the lines follow each other. So just because I want to show it just for this one time, And there is a bunch of videos actually showing how to use the compass, but there you go. You pivot, you kind of roll it on your fingertips here after you've taken your measurements. And test it if it doesn't work. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so that's how I transfer it to that other plane. You want to use two hands to set it. Okay. Now, if I didn't have a compass, some of you may not, the way to bring this over is with a 45 degree uh, triangle. So this is 45 degrees right here. And once again, I'm, I'm sure you should have had this stuff in middle school or whatnot, but you know, we got 360 degrees. So 45 is half of 90 degrees. Where are we? Yeah. So that's 90 and this is 45, right? So if I use that edge, I basically get the same effect as the compass, right? So I could bring now this and why don't I do it just so that to demonstrate it, okay? But you have to admit the compass looks neater. All right. Um, So now I'm going to bring them across from those spots. And you might say, well, I could have just measured, right? That's true, that's true. You could have just measured, but um, this kind of shows you the process. Uh, you see, without even thinking now, I drew the view um, because you know I, got, I had that information. Um, and just, yeah, you know, that's just the way this, this, this process is not visible in the computer. So on the computer, just press a button. Oh, right view. Oh, left view. Okay. But you're missing all these sort of, yeah, relationships. Um, so I hope that this helps you in general later when you are on the computer. Okay. So let's see, I'm going to do the double line of the top first. And again, we just did this view. Just did this view, and now we're going to do that view, right? Right there. So let's see. Take my reading. And, well, I'm at the top. Why not? Just going to do it again. Start from the. So here I'm using the middle line actually as my glue line, so to speak. Remember at this scale, you know, we're not trying to be, you know, we're just giving a representation. This would be, you know, I don't know, a pattern drawing. Actually, patterns are more pictorial, they're less analytical, um, just to show the idea. But this would be needed for someone trying to actually um, build this thing, right? Uh, so now I'm going to transfer that little fold line and I need for that I need the point where it meets the, the pitch part, the top of the pitch. So right there, and I'm just going to eyeball it where I need to stop them um, because you have those lines here and here. And I'm just going to do it freehand because I have to connect it to points like that. Like that, 
Okay, notice I'm leaving those a little bit lighter because they're not really physical lines, they're just scores. Okay, now comes the fun part. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna show two sections. Now, you know, something like this, a section is not that different from the other views, right? But you will start seeing how it's glued together, how it's attached together. Um, but I do wanna spend a few words on sections in general cross sections or longitudinal sections. And for that, um, I'm gonna need to make a little bit of a mess. Um, and I'm just gonna make sure that I'm still recording here. because That would be nice. Yeah, okay. Um, so I need a drink of water before I do this. Um, and I need to actually put a, put a little tablecloth because it's going to be messy. Um, so sections are nice because it can, it gets you under the skin, so to speak. <laughs> um, it gets you at the, you know, at the heart of things because you're going to be able to uh, see inside. Okay. Now. Some sections are more revealing than others, okay? So let's try this. This is a pair. I'm gonna cut it, what you might call it. Oops, I was cutting my computer. Um, a longitudinal section or lengthwise, right? So let's see what happens. This is nice and ripe. Um, I should taste it. Okay, so I cut it. And I get this, right? So now you say, oh, okay, the left side is similar to the right side, et cetera. And I can see the seeds, right? Um, so that's one section. What if I try another section and I do it here? And now we're getting a little more interesting stuff because you can see one of the seeds didn't quite, we can see that actually it turns out that even though this is pretty round, it's a pentagonal symmetry. And apples I think are the same. So the pentagon has to do with pairs. Um, and so you, you could say it's a rotational symmetry, five star symmetry, whatnot. Um, and this is where this section allows you to see, you know, more information than the other section, right? So well, let's see if it's good. Mm. It's very good, but I didn't wash it. That's not good. Because with COVID, I've been washing everything with soap before I even peel it. Well, I hope this is not my, my last video. Um, okay, so that was the section. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna cut this guy and look inside. And just to show you how, you know, a section really is, I'm gonna literally cut through it. And um, remember that we're gonna we're gonna make one section through this line, and we're gonna look this side, and then we're gonna make a section through this line. I'm gonna look from the top. Okay. Um. So let's see. This stuff is pretty strong. Uh, I have to remember now. I want to position my cut so that there's a joint here, okay, where the where the stuff is glued right there. So in my view, I'm gonna put that corner in this corner right here on the left. So I'm gonna cut this way. Oh yeah, you can see from the little fold too. That's the position. I'm gonna this cut this way and, and look there. Okay, let's see if I can cut it right in half. This is a hacksaw, it's actually for metal, but it does a pretty good job um, on this guy too. Uh, there we go. So 
So that's the first cut. Okay. So that's already pretty interesting. You can see that reveals the fact that that fold on the outside is not, you know, glued to itself. Okay. Um, which is not the case at the bottom. Okay. So what I just, this part right here is this part and you can see there's no glue here, but at the bottom there is. So at the bottom, obviously it's different. So now I'm going to cut another one. Let me find it. Yeah, here it is. And I'm going to cut this through the uh, half point of the whole thing, which is slightly below, below the roof line here, this line. This stuff smells. Okay. So let's see. What about there? Nice. Okay, now we could do a view, a view of the thing looking, you know, after we cut it, looking up, I mean, looking from underneath, but we're not gonna do that. Um, the views are similar again. Um, the difference is that the bottom is completely glued to itself. Okay, so there we go. We just, we just made two sections and let's just review them again. Maybe I'll use this as a, so the first section. Yeah. The first section we cut through this. Now the position is with this being the corner that is joined, which is this guy right here. So when I cut it and I take this away and I look this way, I see the joint right there. See that? That's the part that seals it. Okay, so we're gonna be drawing that. And we see this roof part too. Um, the other section was by cutting here and looking from above. So again, if I take my corner, make sure it's on the left, upper left right there, which is the joint right there. Okay. So it was like this, I cut, I knock it out and then I look and I'm gonna see the joint there, okay? So these are the two positions that I'm gonna have, and they're gonna be here, okay? That's that view with the little joint at the, at the corner there. And then my other section is gonna be this one with the joint uh, on the right side, okay? just because of the way we set the sections up. And now I'm actually gonna take a clean version of all these things. Because I did this yesterday down in the basement. Okay, let's see, oh, nice. Um, okay. So again, these are, you know, they're a little rough here, but you get the idea. And just to review also again, how this thing is put together. Um, notice how it's kind of round. If you watch the video, you'll see that it's also a tube in the video and eventually it gets, you know, pinched like that and, and closed like that. Um, in other words, they, they first close these, then they fill it and then they close this. Um, it's also round because this comes in big rolls from the printing factory. Um, so it, it tends to keep that shape. Um, it's quite amazing how it, they can, you know, this, this invention in the 50s really allowed for milk to be stored for like months and months and it wouldn't go bad, right? Um, Okay, eventually, uh, a week from when this is due, we're gonna actually be drawing this shape too. All right, so now I just keep the two that I need, which are, yeah, this one, which is gonna be here, and this one, which is going to be here. 
And notice that now these two don't actually seem to be related to each other because that's the corner there and this is the corner here. But that's only because of the way the views work out, okay? So I need to mark first the, um, the sections and I do that by drawing uh, a long dash, a short dash, and then putting these little arrows that point to the direction I'm gonna be looking because once you cut it, you see the cut edge, right? Which would normally be cross edge to show, but you still still, still see stuff that's you know beyond that point, right? So those are regular lines, whereas the cross the cut lines are more like um, darker and also treated. There was no room here to do cross etching, so I just made them filled in. Um, okay, so the next step is to draw the sections to indicate what the sections are. And let's see if I can do that. This video is also going long, but you know, I, I've stopped worrying about how long they are and feeling guilty that they're so long because I'm not the BBC, <laughs> I've been telling everyone, meaning um, it's so much work to edit and to prepare um, that, you know, it's okay, you can skip forward um, or play me at twice the speed. <laughs> okay, I'm just sharpening the, um, the pencil on my paper here down below, okay. All right, so, so anyway, they're exactly in the middle of this part. And so I'm gonna quickly just measure, let's see, yeah, cause here I don't have it. That was 35, 17 and a half, right there. This was 45 basically, so 22 and a half. So yeah, you can't see those marks, but I can because my eye is more sensitive than this camera, even though this camera is HD. Um, so that's one. That's two. So now I do my long dash, short dash, long dash, short dash on dash. And now I realize it's a little bit tricky because these lines are a little bit confusing in terms of the object line. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll darken the other lines later. Um, and now we want to do, okay, so now I have to use my triangle to do my little errors because they're, they're drawn in this fashion. I don't know if you can see it, right? On the very edge here of the video. So for that, I'm gonna be using the triangle in this fashion. Sorry, it's a little small, but, um, and I'm just gonna eyeball them, okay? Uh, let's see, I'm gonna look in, in. So now I'm drawing the little bases of those, of those little pyramids. I mean, not pyramids, but triangles. And then I draw, like that, okay? So I'm literally just eyeballing them. See, I'm always using the same angle. So one section is looking down, the other section is looking to the left. Okay. And I tell you what, well, actually you see it looks better if I fill them in. I made them a little big, um, bigger. It's a little hard to fill in. So maybe you can help yourself by holding your wrist to fill in like that. Um, you probably wanna take breaks too, right? I'm doing this in one take and it's I'm getting a little tired, but but I am standing, which really helps if you, if you have access to a high table, I recommend it. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna write the letters next to it. And then because I'm doing that, why don't I just make room for all my, my labels. Um, so next to it, next to the arrows to do the little letters. And below here to do the views eventually, even though I realize I made that label a little bit 
closer, so maybe, maybe I'll lower it right there. Okay, so we said this was A, AA, A, and BB. Okay, in a lot of drawings, this drawing might be like on another sheet. It's, I mean, sorry, the section will be on another sheet and then and then you can, you know, you'll have to go to that page. Um, so let's see. Um, okay, yeah, so let's do this section. Now, because it's looking this way, I'm going to draw it directly using the projection lines. So I'm gonna start projecting all these lines Right, and I know it's a square base, so it's gonna be the same, the same width. So I will, again, space it by one and a half uh, right here. And then it's uh, 35, and that will give me the, uh, kind of the block. And now at the same time, I can bring this line up because I know it's the same width. So there we go, I've, I've very quickly now defined where they're gonna be, both of them, both sections. Okay, and I'm gonna need also these other two lines of the roof right there. Okay, so I'm still doing everything pretty light. Um, once again, this is the one we're gonna draw here, right? We cut it here. We're gonna look this way and that's what we're gonna see. And this is the bottom. Cut this way, you're looking down. And that's what we're gonna see with the joint over there, okay? Um, so now I'm just gonna do it. I, I'm gonna quickly review this. Um, there is, you know, there's a lot of detail here. It's it's too much to show it to scale, so don't worry that much. But um, you know, there's these are thicker layers than in the middle. Um, so what I did here, I tried to. So I did show again the thickness, you know, throughout, right? So let's see. And here, also notice how this joint doesn't quite meet there, right? Where it doubles up. So I left a little gap there. So let's see, I need my middle part. And 35 is again 17 and a half. So I get my, just my sort of construction elements right there, okay. Here I'm gonna leave a little gap. And let's start with the hard part, which is actually these lines, because these don't have a kind of a set. Actually, let's start with the roof, with the very top here. So I'm gonna quickly again draw two. Um, two layers. It's gonna come down here. Oops. And then using my two triangles, I'm going to try to do the second one. And this time, they're going to continue all the way um, like that because they are really cut right through, right? And notice that I'm actually drawing them dark from the get-go without, um, because I already have the, uh, and these are definitely thicker than the real thing. These are these are about half a millimeter. So because it's half a millimeter in real life, they're about twice as thick as they, as they probably should be in real life. Oops. And here I was trying to simulate to show that there is two layers. It's a little hard. There's only one layer in the middle. Okay. Um, so, 
So normally, what you would do in a section, you would like cross it like that to show that it's a section as opposed to a regular line that might be in the back. But here, there's there's just no room. So what I did was I just made them filled in by drawing an extra line in between like that. As long as it looks different from the other drawings. Okay, so now I just, I'm basically drawing three lines, one next to each other. Okay, so this gives a sense of the, a T scale, if, we, if it was thicker, well, even if it was bigger, half a millimeter is still very thin. So um, this is a good compromise. And now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a dimension there. Um, so I need to pick up that detail. And if you look at it now, okay, I see that line. I see these lines and I see the joint there. So the joint I measured earlier, it's uh, six millimeters. So it must, it must have been 12 in real life. And so let me do this part first. I'm gonna bring over that little detail right there, which allows me to do this. And now these are single lines because these are not cut through. These are actually still in good standing. <laughs> Um, they're not damaged. And then I take a look again. Oh, wow. They really spin. It's that, it's that bent, you know, it's that bowed um, surface because it's round. Okay, so that's that, that's finished. Now I'm gonna finish the other one. If you recall, we are showing the joint there and then these two parts not, not touching. I'll just leave it there. I've already left a little gap there. So again, this angle is not standard. So I have to do it um, by hand. Um, though before I do anything else, I'll do the um, thickness of the wall, which in this case, there's a little bit of doubling up there, but I'm just not gonna be that picky about it. I'm just gonna do a regular, well, actually I could. There, I did a little hint of that joint right there. So again, just using the two triangles at all times. Now I'm gonna put in an extra line in the middle. I know it's hard to see here in the, the video, but that's what I'm doing, okay? I'm making basically making three lines, one next to each other, which turns out it's like a fill. And yeah, okay, so now I do this diagonals, which again, don't go to the uh, center exactly, but there's a little gap. See how I'm going again from ending to end, from ending to the middle and from the other ending to the other to the middle. Let's see, is there anything else? There's nothing there. There's just the middle fold here. there and also this is six millimeters to show that joint which disappears right disappears under there so maybe darken this line okay all right, we're almost there. So now what we need is to put to put some labels and put some dimensions. Um, we're just gonna put very few dimensions. We're just gonna put these three partials, these two parts, this part, the toll, 
the total of the, uh, this would be the depth, I guess, and this is the width, okay? So maybe measure some distance from the, uh, from the object. Uh, let's see, let's just say, I'm gonna give it a little more room, one and a half also. Half. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna sharpen this a little bit more. Trying to be careful not to break it. And now I'm gonna do light lines for my um, for my. Um, oh, it doesn't quite make it. So called, uh, let's see, these are called extension lines. Extension lines, yeah. Right, as opposed to projection lines. And actually, I shouldn't have done, um, just like there because I only do oops, the partials and should just extend the top there. And then over here at the top, right there. So once you construct the uh, different parts, then you can darken them a little bit. Let's see. Oops, I did that crooked. So these lines shouldn't be as dark as the object lines because they're not as important. Um, And then the way we show, we could do little errors, but the way I see it done in the computer these days is with a little diagonal, a thick little diagonal like that, um, where they cross, okay? Like that. Like that. Um, which is a little quicker too than doing an arrow. Okay. So one at the top now, real quick, and then the labels, and then we'll be done. So remember, I set it up, then I use that angle, which is what I need. Just keep the same angle. Um, like that. Like that. And now I just need the lettering lines. Um, I'm going to put them right above, right next to it. Whenever possible, don't put labels sideways. Okay, they're really ugly. Just put the labels straight if possible. Okay, I need two more labels here. And then we will be done. I think I've got it all. So section AA, AA, section BB, top view, front view, right side view. Uh, and then the dimensions. I'm actually just gonna copy them now. So this is, ah, I missed one here, right? That's the depth. Okay. Just take it right there. Okay. 
lettering lines. Okay, so now I can copy them. So that's 70. I'm gonna press it harder. That's why I made the 70, 19, 19, oops. 51 and 89. And you can just put millimeters once. You don't have to repeat it every time. Um, and then that's also 70 right here. So AA and BB. So this is section AA. And this is section BB. There we go. I think I'm done. Whew. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, okay, what else can I do? I think one thing I can do is darken this again, so called hinge hinged walls or hinged panels to give it a nice, and I you know if you want to be beautiful, you can just fade your line towards the edges like that. Um, here as well. Like that. So, you know, it's kind of setting these quadrants kind of. And I'm also going to, in this drawing, I put a double line for the base so that you see the objects are like sitting down, kind of nice. Um, I'm not, I'm, because it's so small, I'm just gonna put a single line instead of two, just make it, just give it a little bit of a resting spot. Like that. Okay, so this is not really an object. It's just, just a way to get that drawing to feel good. Um, I think that's pretty good. I mean, you can see, perhaps you might want to darken some lines. You know, if you're not, if you're not satisfied, if some, if like for example, this particular view, because it's got the lines from the sections is a little hard, harder to read, right? So you might say, okay, that I'm gonna darken this guy a little bit more. Um, but everything else I think is good. So I think I'm just gonna leave it like that. So once again, this was the uh, goldfish. And, um, And this is the orthographic, okay? Oh, sorry, I'm missing some labels, you see? I think I'm done. Okay, slow down, let's finish it properly. This is the top view, I, I forgot the views. Top view, front view. And right side view, okay? Now the right and the left here would have been the same, but it's important to say it's right side. So I got the scale, I got everything else. Um, I think I'm good. Here's one quick way to check to see if you got everything. You know, this trick is like a flipbook animation trick. Um, looks right. I think I got everything. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you for the next video, which will take much less time because it's a simpler drawing. Okay.